Um, so my name is Peter Chittam. I'm one of the developer evangelists here at Salesforce. Uh, sorry, Salesforce. We're now just Salesforce. And um, I'm really pleased to bring you this session on advanced developer certification. Um, we'll just uh, quickly get into the safe harbor slide, which simply states, uh, if we make any forward-looking statements, don't make any purchasing decisions based on those. Make your decisions based on stuff that's currently in the product. Ta-da! We're all done with that one. OK, so we'll do a little roundup of the, uh, the four people on the stage here. As I said, developer evangelist here at Salesforce. Um, that's my Twitter handle, at P. Chittam, if you want to follow me. Um, we're also here with Leah McGowan-Hare. Oh, actually, let me take a step back. So one of the things we want to do is tell you who we are and what we've done with advanced developer certification. So I've been a judge for advanced developer cert. Um, I've also helped review assignments that were going to become part of the assignments for, uh, for developer candidates. So, and you passed, right? And I have passed the advanced developer certification. You don't get to be a judge unless you've actually done the certification. So, and then we have Leah McGowan here. Hi, good morning. Um, welcome. My name is Leah McGowan here. That's an E N, not A N. I don't know what was going on there, Peter, but um, that is my Twitter handle too. I don't, I don't do a whole lot. Of, if you follow me, I, it might be a little boring, but you're more than welcome to. <laughs> Look at that on the fly. Um, I. I myself am an advanced developer certified. I also am an instructor here with Salesforce. I deliver Apex classes, Visual Force, and admin classes. I um, also have been a judge for the advanced developer uh, certification for programming assignments. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, Ralph. And we did. Hi, so I'm uh, Ralph Calloway. Calloway like the golf clubs. Uh, I have passed the uh, Dev 501 exam, and then I've gotten to write some scenarios, judge some scenarios, and even help with uh, figuring out what we want to judge you guys on. Yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. Yep, it's all good. Um, so, hi, I'm Caleb Seidel. Um, obviously, passed, right? That's sort of a theme going on here. Um, I've been a judge for a very long time. I can't even remember how long it's been that long. Um, I've uh, authored some scenarios, I've reviewed scenarios. Um, and just had a really, really good time working with the certification team on uh, building up the advanced developer certification program. So uh, thank you to the certification team who are sitting right here representing. Awesome. So yeah, thank you very much. And that's worth mentioning. So, uh, so with us today, uh, we have Nina and Jennifer from the certification team. You guys want to stand up and just wave? So um, you know, we, we should be, a to be able to answer most of the questions, but if there's anything um, very specific about uh, the certification stuff. We may defer to them, so uh, that's part of the reason why they're there. And also, so you know, they can rein us in if we need to. So, <laughs> um, so uh, let me just ask this really quickly: Who here has um, uh, have done has done no certification yet, as far as the developer certification? So a few of you guys. All right. Who here has passed the developer certification? Everybody, or nearly everybody. Um, who here has passed the multiple choice exam and is waiting to do the assignment? Okay, a few people. And uh, done the assignment but not passed? Anyone going to fess up to that? It's okay. That man That's, you're, you're brave. I respect you for that, man. <laughs> Good job. And um, anyone currently doing the assignment? Because there is an open window right now. So, all right. So, just thought I'd check that. Okay, cool. Um, so, let's dive in here. Uh, this is the plan. Uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, the actual multiple choice e exam to begin with. Uh, sorry, a little overview of advanced developer certification. We'll talk about the exam. Um, I will then pass it on to Caleb to talk about the assignment and essay. Leah will talk about the judge's perspective. We'll wrap it up with Ralph talking about the anatomy of the assignment itself, and then Q&A. So hopefully we should have a good 10 to 15 minutes of Q&A time. And when we get there, please make use of the microphone. Um, that is in the middle of the room there, so that uh, the, this can be recorded for people who are watching the video afterward. OK, so this is what the certification program looks like, big picture. Um, as you know, we're focusing on the developer track right there. So it starts with the developer certification, and then you move on to advanced developer certification. <clears throat> 
Um, now, every certification is governed by the certification program agreement. Um, essentially, uh, we just want to make sure that we're protecting the security and the confidentiality of the exam itself. Uh, a big part of this is to make sure that the exam keeps its integrity so that when you go and get your certification, it remains meaningful for the life of that certification. And you agree to this when you agree to the, the uh, test taker agreement, uh, when you actually go and set up your account um, in the Web Assessor uh, portal. Um, the gist of it is you are prohibited from disclosing, copying, and publishing exam questions. That's the gist of it. So in other words, don't share what you've seen. So as far as the, um, the, the way advanced developer certification works out, um, the goal is to demonstrate mastery of Apex Visual Force and testing your Apex code. Um, and generally, we recommend somewhere around eight months experience. Um, that, that varies greatly. Uh, some people have passed with less than that. Some people have much more experience and have uh, gone on and done it as well. Um, step zero is getting the actual developer certification. So those of you who have no certification yet, you've got some work to do to do the developer certification, which is point and click customization of the force.com platform. Um, you then have the multiple choice assignment, or sorry, multiple choice exam, rather, uh, which is step one. Then you lead on to the actual uh, assignment, which you actually get to complete um, some customizations to an org um, that ends with an essay. And then everybody who has a certification at salesforce.com does maintenance um, because we have lots of releases, right? So um, quickly, the exam. Uh, the advanced developer certification exam uh, is two hours long. Uh, you have 69 questions, passing score of 73%. Currently, the price is still 400 US dollars. Um, and you get the results immediately, just like you always do with any of our online, um, online taken exams. Uh, it is a proctored exam. Um, it's closed book. Uh, so that means you either go to a testing center and you basically sit there with just you, some pieces of paper, uh, if you want to take some notes, uh, if, you know, if you want to work something out as far as code. Um, or you can do the online proctored version, which involves a little camera that observes you while you do your exam. Has anyone done the online proctored version? Yeah, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? I hear, I hear, I hear, I hear different stories about it. But um, so, what is on the actual multiple choice exam? Read the study guide. Uh, the 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 bulk of the reason this session exists is really to focus on the assignment. Because in my opinion, I think the study guide does give a very good idea of what topics you will be tested on when you do the multiple choice exam. Um, you know, so take a look, and you'll see that there are kind of broad topics like apex, visual force, right? What percentage of the questions are going to be comprised of that? But if you look at the detailed um, descriptions, you'll see the actual individual things that we're going to be looking for. You know, so for example, what are use cases for batch apex? That's a nice, pretty straightforward thing to look up in the documentation. And what I did was I just kind of ranked myself on what I knew. And the stuff I didn't know, that's what I went and I studied. Uh, incidentally, I talk a little bit about my technique. Um, one of the reasons this session came about is because I wrote an article on the Salesforce developer website. Um, it's called The Path to Advanced Developer Certification. Um, so if you haven't, who's read the article? few people. Excellent. Nice. If you haven't read the article, I strongly recommend taking a look at that um, because we're going to talk about some things today, but the article definitely underscores some things as well. Um, exams are kept current with every single release, so that means every single release, every question is looked, like, looked at by at least two different people um, to make sure that they're released current, they're still accurate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and there we go. Let's move on and uh, have Caleb, talk about the assignment and essay. I can move the My slides turn. forward if you want. Oh, all right, sure, that works. I don't even have to click, right? Um, what are we gonna talk about? Okay, right, so the program and assignment window. So um, this is actually pretty cool. Uh, <clears throat> once you pass your multiple choice uh, exam, you will uh, very shortly thereafter be invited to sign up for the program and assignment. So this is nice, keeps it fair. Um, so as you know, people are passing, they're getting sort of that invite. Uh, and it's not frantic clicks like it used to be. Thank you very much for that improvement. That's awesome. 
Um, so sign up. <clears throat> and then you're going to receive the assignment. So the time you sign up, it takes around approximately 30 days to get the assignment. Um, so you get that assignment. Great. Read it. Take your time because you have 30 days to do it. All right. So take a deep breath. <sighs> All right. 30 days. Nice time. When you sign up for um, the <clears throat> assignment, you also get the opportunity to register for the essay. And it's actually re really important. When you register, register at the end of the window. Right? Do the assignment and then the essay, because the essay is actually questions about what you did. It's not just general questions. So <coughs> in order to pass the essay, take it at the end, um, you know, a day or two before the deadline. Um, so that's what happens there. So then you submit it, and then uh, <clears throat> we judge it. And um, there are a lot of people that submit these things, and there are a lot of judges that work very, very hard, and it takes us a lot of time, but it's well worth it. You get lots of feedback. And um, you know, on day 80 from when you actually receive the assignment, you'll get those results back. Um, so what goes into the assignment? Um, <clears throat> What you will get is an EE org with all the data model and point and click stuff done. You get a requirements document, right? It shouldn't be too shocking. It's something that maybe you guys are putting together for your customers or your internal um, company or whatever. So that's what you're going to get as a starting point. And then it's up to you to do all the programming, right? The Apex code, the visual force, the Apex tests, um, the Apex tests. And the Apex tests, I'm sorry, did I say that uh, too many times? I <coughs> keep going on here. Um, and uh, it's designed to take a minimum of 20 hours. Um, I've heard people take a lot longer, um, but you have 30 days to do it. So plenty of time, take a deep breath. It's not about getting it done in a day. It's about taking your time and, and doing it. So, and then you obviously have to deploy it into production. Um, so what should you do when you get the assignment? You should read it and then you should put it down, and then you should go to bed, and then the next day you should read it again, and you should really plan out your solution. I mean, just like what you would do in real life, right? It's, yes, it's a little mini kind of thing, but just think of it as a real life thing. Uh, focus on the platform, right, force.com, uh, write a complete set of tests, uh, write a complete set of tests. Um, no, sorry, I won't say that again. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and do your own work. Right? And there's a lot of great resources out there on the internet. There's frameworks, there's Apex Lang, there's all sorts of cool stuff. You can Google this and Google that and snippets of code. And that's really cool. And that's great that there's a wonderful community. This is you. This is your work. Um, and take pride in it, right? You know, add comments, which you may or may not do in real life, but do it here, right? Um, you know, show us you're passionate for the platform and for development in general. Um, and uh, yeah, keep it simple. Um, so, oops, I'm sorry, Peter, I keep like running into you. Um, <clears throat> what not to do? Um, <clears throat> don't focus on the aesthetics of it, right? You're, you're going to do some page and, you know, it doesn't need to be all whiz bang, right? Things don't need to fly across the screen. That's not what this is about. It's not about Angular, or Polymer, or jQuery, or any of that stuff. It's about the platform. I know the platform supports all that good stuff, but we're just focused on the platform. Um, and don't get too complex, right? You don't have to go, go too nuts on it, right? So um, just keep it simple. Um, and then there's the essay. So I mentioned before, right, you, when you sign up for the exam, you schedule the essay. So the essay is proctored, just like the multiple choice exam. You can do the sort of drone-powered webcam that, like, spies on you in your house. Um, if you own a drone and a webcam, I don't know. Um, or you can go someplace. I like going someplace. It's easy. Um, but anyway, 60 minutes, it's three short essay questions. We're not looking for, you know, going to college kind of like giant expository writing thing. This is just questions about what you did. Um, and then your results um, will show up later, not right away. So when you hit submit on the essay, it's not like pop up and, yay, here's how I did. Then you just sort of get to sit there and, and sweat it out. Um, so there you go. Uh, and then now we're going to talk about the judge's perspective on doing this whole assignment thing. So uh, here you go. Leah, there you are. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Good morning. Is it afternoon? Good at You know, when Dreamforce comes, it all just becomes one big week. I'm like, what day is it? Who are you? Why? My kids are like, where's my lunch? I'm like, your lunch? <laughs> oh, that's right. I got, I got kids. I have family. I forget. Um, I should get a pass during Dreamforce. That's what I said. I'm going to have to work that out with my husband. 
see how that goes. Um, well, welcome. And I'm going to talk about the assignment and the judging perspective. So when you get your, when you submit your assignment, it then gets submitted to uh, the certification to judge. And there is a host of judges that judge your assignment, you, two judges per assignment. The assignment window can go from six to eight weeks, and it takes a lot of effort to judge your assignments. So do know, I've been on both sides, right? I've been on the side where I've did my assignment and put my blood, sweat, and tears in it. And I've been on the side of judging where I put in my blood, sweat, and even more tears, um, <laughs> lots of tears, because the amount of code you look at. I mean, we look at every line of code. So I, I think I look at more lines of code when I was a judge than my own code when I was an assignment. So do note that it is not just, you know, some robotic thing that we push in it, you know, robotic judging. No, we actually look at it. It's handcrafted judging. So um, lots of love and attention going toward your assignments. So do know we do respect and honor the, the amount of work you put in. And you'll know why in a moment. So uh, how they are judged. There is a standard scoring methodology. Each judge receives a rubric, so, well, a, a form that we follow to do the judging. And then for each assignment, there is a job aid. Because for the assignments, there are very specific things we're looking for. So each of them are different. And we have a job aid that we follow when we're looking at that. And what happens is um, it's broken into three general areas, business requirements, functional requirements, and are you following APEX best practices around patterns? Okay, um, Very important, very important that, that all three of these are very important that they are all followed and make sure it works. Just make sure it works because even if it doesn't work, we still got to look at all the code every single line of code. Um, and the key is it's consistent judging. So let's say I, I'm a judge and Caleb's a judge and we both have the same assignment. So we go through and we do our very tedious review of your assignment. He, see, he gets so excited about assignments. It's, I know, I know. Something you want to add about that? You know, drop the mic, bam, what? I just judged. Um, so he, we, we go through and we judge it and what happens is our comments, our scoring, are put into a database. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot there was a, uh, a slide on this. And it is you and I. Oh my gosh, yeah, me and you. Yeah. Look at that. So I didn't even have the right icon to represent me. I, I, I was like, you need more diversity in your icons. And there I am. Look at that. So, um, so Caleb and I would go through, and then let's say on criteria A, he says, I give it a four, he gives it a five. Then we, we actually have a meeting where we go through each criteria and ones that we don't agree on, we have a conversation about it. And he might bring something to my attention that I might have overlooked and said, well, they did do this. Or I might bring something to his attention that he might have overlooked. And then we come to a unified decision. But we do actually go through and we look at it. And there is a third party mediator that actually, I won't say who that person is, mediator who actually facilitates the conversation because it can get real heated. I mean, Apex, yo, it's, it's <laughs> It's tough in those streets of Apex. It's on. I'm like, I said, no, you know, we actually go through and if I'm feeling strong about something or he's feeling strong about something, we have that facilitator, that third party to say, well, simmer down. We're going to go with this. Um, and you are, we don't know who you are and we don't want to know who you are. So do me a favor. Do not put your name in the comments. Because what happens when you get submitted, a number gets generated to, to identify you. That's how I want to know you. I want to know you as 0011000. I don't want to know who you are. People put their name in big. And it may not serve you well, right? <laughs> like, oh, I know Leah. I'm going to put my name in the, mm, yeah, I do know you. So it may not serve you well. So it's best to stay um, anonymous so you don't know who you are. Uh, judging facts, there are four windows per year. We have 250 candidates per window. These are averages. Um, many judges each window, lots of judges. And we have two judges per assignment. And in about 800 hours or so on each judging window, it's a lot of time put in. And then, you know, you want to go ahead. These, this will be available, right, this soft copy of these? Yeah. So the, these slides will be available, so make sure you're following this session. And Peter will post these slides for you so you can get the link to where you can um, find the, 
the policy on registering for the assignment. So it's, it's great fun. Just, you know, do know, the thing I want you to walk away knowing with today, we put a lot of love and attention into judging just as much as you put it. We probably put more into judging than you put into your assignment. How's that? Yeah, we do. All right, thanks. <laughs> All right, thanks, Leah. So uh, anyone starting to rethink taking a certification yet? All right, they're still in. So like we said, a lot of work goes into this, and a big part of this is actually making the assignment for you guys. So we've talked a little bit about what's in there. Um, so what that actually means for me is that I'm getting a brand new dev org. I am creating all the data model for you. I am setting up the profiles. I am doing field level security. I am doing every little piece of this org to support some crazy fictitious Acme company which has some really unique requirements that get you to demonstrate some very specific skill sets. So when you get in there, everything is laid out for you. You have the exact requirements. I mean, this is like the dream project. No discovery, no questions, no ambiguous requirements, we hope. Um, <laughs> and all you have to do is just put your mind to it, figure out how that translates into code land, and write that code. Um, show us what you do, and you're going to do great. Um, so next slide. So the, this is the part where I tell you how hard this thing really is. And when you're doing the assignment, it's important to understand this little pull and tug. So the whole point of this test is to get you guys to show in a real world environment that you can apply the skills you've learned through eight months of using Apex and Visual Force. And so what this means, at the same time, we want to have this really realistic, real world project that's going to be just like you do in the every day. But at the same time, we also want to make sure we hit all those bullet points and that we don't give you something that's actually going to end up being that one of those projects that just keeps going and going. Is at two to three months later, you're still not done with this thing. No scope so, creep. <laughs> yeah, no scopes creep, please. <laughs> so we do a lot of work to make sure that we kind of balance that. So we get you to demonstrate everything. Uh, and what that means in practice for you is that every once in a while, you're going to see, like, you know, this isn't exactly realistic. I don't know if a company would do this. Or I don't know if that is exactly how I would do this thing. And if you think about that, whenever you see something and you're like, I don't know if this is quite the way to do it, what we're doing is trying to either make it easier for you or trying to kind of push you in the direction to show us what we want to see you prove. And of course, um, if that ever has a question and you're like, I still don't get it, I'm not really sure what they're going for, please email us. I get tons of emails every time we do one of these windows and it, we will answer any question you have. If you're unclear, it's always better to ask. So once I get this and I have my baby, I've spent, you know, 40 hours just crafting this. This scenario is perfect. Nothing can possibly go wrong with it. And then he goes through a view, and mainly this guy gets here and tells me that, no, 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 you can't do that. That's way too hard. This needs in there. And he, he rips it out, and I basically go cry for a day or so. And um, then I pick up the pieces and pull it back together. And hopefully, and again, kind of talking to those inconsistencies, this is the point where from time to time, it's happened that, you know, I'll delete this requirement in one spot and then forget to remove a reference six pages later. It happens. I'm sorry. But again, if you see those things, email us. Um, we will explain anything. And we do a lot of work to make sure this, this is really easy and clear, but we're not perfect. Um, and yeah, at the end of the day, it's 120 person hours. It's because I do the whole exam. He does the whole exam, we review it, we beta test it. I mean, we put this thing through the ringer. So the hope is that when it gets to you guys, it's just smooth sailing. All right. So thank you, guys. Hold on to that. Yeah. Oh. So, so that's it. That's all we got to say. Um, but what do you have for questions? So uh, if you have any questions, please come up to the microphone. Help yourself. And uh, you know, even, even if you have to line up, that's fine. Um, and we'll get through as many as we can. We have till 11.10. So that's uh, almost 20 minutes. Time for lots and lots of questions. I really, appreciate, I really appreciate all the effort you're putting into this. And I noticed uh, on the uh, overview sheets like, uh, for the exams, you have one or two uh, sample questions. Is there any way that you would be able to put a sample uh, assignment out there or some segments of it, just to kind of give us an idea of what we're facing, even though it wouldn't be realistic, it wouldn't be the sort of thing that you would actually give us. Uh, I, I think that's a great suggestion. Nina, can we get that on the list? OK. Yeah. Thank you. Ideas. Um, yeah. Ideas. Two, two questions. Um, the, 
essay exam, from my understanding, uh, is to describe how you got to the uh, solution. So you said something about scheduling it before the 30-day window, or yeah. is it right after, or well, could be when after? You, when you sign up for the exam, it asks you, it prompts you, what day do you want to take the, exam, the essay portion? And you know when the deadline is, right? It'll say, hey, for this window, the deadline is January 3rd. So when you get the sign-up sheet, you say, yep, I want to take the essay on January 1st or January 2nd. So it has 2nd. to be before the end of the deadline? Just before the end of the deadline, okay. yeah, like a day or two before. Yeah. And a, a generalized question, I don't know you, you can you have this information, but how many advanced certified developers are there, and what's the failure rate, uh, if you can? I, that's, that's some secret sauce yeah. right there. So we don't, yeah, publish, no. <laughs> we, we don't publish the actual numbers of certified individuals, um, and that's just a decision that certification has taken at this point. Um, as to what the pass-fail rate is, I, I don't think we publish that either. But it, it, it varies. How about that? <laughs> that's a very consulting answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if you want to uh, know pass-fail, you can go to Web Assessor, right, and type in lots of people's names yeah. and, like, look at their certs, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do that there. Exactly. So, I, I mean, I, I can say just anecdotally, completely unofficially, that, you know, I talk to a lot of developers. And, you know, what I would say is, you know, in general, the, you know, and I guess the question is, are, are you asking overall for getting the certification or just for the exam? I mean, what, or just for the assignment? I mean, It, some you, some when you judge, you typically can tell someone's experience level pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what I'll say is a big reason why I wrote the article in the first place is that I was getting frustrated judging assignments where people were just not passing because of silly mistakes or silly omissions, like not testing correctly. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's. Yeah, I think I say, and then I say make sure to do a good round of unit tests twice. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's my article. So, you know, and, and then there are other stupid things that you can do with, with Apex code, you know, and if you follow the best practices that are published in the Apex code developer guide, in the community, if you follow things like good patterns, you, you probably will be okay. You know, so again, just to finish this question off, in general, you know, there, people fail, right? Um, most of the ones who I see succeed are the ones who take the time to prepare, who take it seriously, because I've, I've known a lot of developers who jump into the, exam, the assignment thinking, oh, this will be a breeze, um, and who, you know, who, who take the time to get to know everything about the platform, and not just, I, I don't mean like every si single last little <laughs> bit of minutia, but to understand how the platform works from the standpoint of some code, some config. Yeah, just so, take, take yeah. care. Let's do the next question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, I was late to the session because my previous session ran over. Uh, I'm not sure if you have already explained that. You would have. Uh, regarding the assignment, like uh, how much hours is given for the assignment, and can we finish it from home, or is there any restricted time? What, what, how much time do we expect you to do the assign, mm -hmm. assignment? Is that the question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. you have 30 days to yeah. complete it. Okay. But yeah. the but the minimum expected time is 20 hours. Yeah, and, and I would say a range, probably 20 to 40 is probably realistic, and then there's some outliers um, yeah. that people sometimes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've talked to people that have spent 80 hours Hello. on it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> yeah. And by any chance, is this session getting recorded? Will we yes, be it is to recorded. Yeah. Okay, it'll be posted to the chat. Sorry? Yeah, the slides will be posted in Chatter. Yeah. Yes. If you want the recording or the notes, follow this session. They will be posted there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. I took the um, first stage at Dreamforce, failed it. Uh, I have a rough idea for what it is I need to focus on in terms of maybe things I don't understand about the platform, but are there materials outside of the published uh, documentation that you guys would recommend in terms of preparing for the exam and becoming a better developer? So, 
outside the uh, stuff that's published, at least internally in my company, I really like Dan Appleman's book, Advanced okay. Apex Patterns. These are not things that are specifically tested. This is just right. if you want to get a broader exposure to Apex, and through that, probably help you with the test. Dan Appleman's book is great. Yeah. All of the workbooks, going through the, the workbooks once or twice, and we've, I've had a lot of our people on our team say that they went through it the first time, and then a couple days later, they went through it again, and they found that really helped cement the knowledge of it. Um, and then, you know, honestly, just going out and looking on the forums, there's Salesforce, Stack Exchange, and just trying some things out, getting stuck, um, and working through that on the Stack Exchange just one way. Yeah. And, and a great preparation is doing it, too, right? Like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's an exam. I can right. just study for it. And it's not really something you study. I mean, you can study for it. You can read the books and the worksheets. That definitely is hugely helpful. But to have done Visual Force for other people, you know, to have done, you know, Apex code. You're and also taking the class uh, Dev 501 Advanced Developer. Very good instructors. The advanced Developer uh, instruction, yeah. I took that as well, but unfortunately it was about two and a half years ago, so I'm not sure how much of that was retained. <laughs> Anyway, thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi, is there a retake policy? So say for instance, you take the proctor exam, you pass that, but then you don't, you're unsuccessful for the essay or the um, program, programming assignment. Is there like a time frame? I don't remember. The, there is a retake policy. Uh, is it? You can take the, so you can continue to attempt the actual assignment as, as often or as, as, as many times as you need to. Um, however, your priority on the waiting list will go down if you do not succeed the first time. So, um, uh, so part of the, one of these changes is that, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So am it's I a right? New, yeah, new change, yes. yeah. So, so when you pass the, the exam, you get basically put on the, on the top level priority for attending the next, assi the next assignment window. If you fail that assignment window, then it could be you know, four to six months before you'll get into another assignment. Is that about accurate? Yeah. In, in terms of cost, that's... But there's no additional fee. Yeah. Okay, so you basically just get yeah. a chance to retake keep it. Your, keep your certification current. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Keep yeah. on passing yeah. your, your, your release maintenance yeah. exams, and you'll be okay. Yeah, and a note on the release maintenance exams, it's the developer one, right? Like, you'll, you'll get like a, hey, this is the release maintenance for developer. It, that's a requirement for the advanced developer, right? So when we say keep it current, keep the developer current because that one expires, so too does the advanced developer. You lose them both. Yeah. Quick add-on here. Uh, we have the, you're expected to write Apex code in Visual Force and uh, so on. Is there any expectation of you doing any sort of declarative uh, modifications? Oh, only in as much as you need to set up the visual force and apex you developed. Okay, but you don't need to worry about trying yeah. to do it in we, we create way. all the fields for right. you, we set up the profiles, we got the page layouts going, I, I mean, yeah. yeah don't, it, don't, don't change things, like if there's a relationship and it's a master detail, don't make it a lookup. If it's a lookup, don't make it a master detail. Right. If there's a formula field, like leave it alone. If there's a validation right. rule, don't touch it. Like that sort of thing, no. Okay. Um, but you might need to add a button someplace, right? Yeah. You, you might need to worry about security. But not like that. trying to do a lightning process or something like that. No. Okay. No. Thank you. No. My question is about balancing the need to keep it simple, do your own work, and follow best practices. So if there was a need for something, for example, like multiple triggers, uh, best practices, one trigger per object, and then have a way to control it there. Would it be acceptable to do something like a published framework for handling the trigger? Would you, or would that be just overkill for the project? Um, that would likely be overkill and we'd like you to do your own work. Um, yeah. So in that sense, if you want to apply the concepts behind the framework, um, we'd much prefer that. Um, and, and again, in terms of the, the level of best practices, I think there's a difference between things at like very large scales that come into play at large enterprises that you're looking for patterns, such as like these things. And, and we're definitely, this is someone who is relatively new and just showing that they have a solid foundation. Um, so th that's kind of the key things there. And above and beyond that, you're just going to make us read more code and make us unhappy. And in terms of 
Yeah, didn't like it. Really. Yeah. Um, in terms of best practices, one of the things you want to definitely check out is uh, there's a hands-on training, it's probably over now, called Apex Best Patterns. So even if you did not get to attend that, look for that session record. You can find the recording because there's a lot of useful information. It's a two and a half hour hands-on training that gives tips on a lot of great Apex Best Practices. It's called uh, Patterns, Apex Patterns. And you definitely, and you want to look at that one and you also want to look at um, hands-on training for apex testing. It's another two and a half hour. And they will give you great hands-on experience and um, testing best practices that you want to implement in your programming assignment. Yeah, I mean, think about it from the standpoint of if you were to approach a small project, would you go and implement an entire framework just for a small project? And probably most of us wouldn't. Um, you know, so I, it's, I think even from that standpoint, use your best judgment. But in the end, you know, having to dig through three layers of abstraction just to find the actual thing that you did doesn't make life easier for the judges either. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Um, could you guys talk a little bit about what we're getting ourselves into in terms of maintenance after we, you know, once, we, once you have a developer certification, what, what is the workload like, you know, with three releases oh, well, a year? I mean, you've you got to spend, you know, hours and hours and months <laughs> and months. <laughs> Um, no, the maintenance is, no. is, is if you've, once you've passed the developer, um, once you've passed the admin, I don't yep. know, we didn't ask because it's not a developer, I'm curious, how many people have passed the admin? Yeah, okay. Um, so just how hard is maintenance on the admin? Really hard? I want to say a show of hands, really hard? Yeah, right, so yeah. I, it's I a have, couple yeah. questions, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. I have minutes, the admin there. cert and the developer, so I have to maintain both tracks. Right. And the admin, honestly, is harder to me than the developer, because <laughs> yeah. I, I usually go in cold, and I try to answer the questions, and I always fail the first time. There was one time I failed three times, but I've moved past that. But the admin side, there's a lot, because there's always new features, new functionality coming out, and so much information. But it's an open book test that you do. It, you get it three times a year for each release. I highly encourage you watch the release videos so that don't go in cold. It was, it's a bad choice of time I did with myself. I just thought, oh, I know this stuff. I teach this stuff. Eh, it, I was wrong. So watch the, watch the video, take notes, and then take the test. It's super simple. It's like, yeah, it's depending on the release, it's like three to five questions for developers. It's up to 10 to 15 for admin. Okay. And okay. from a pure financial standpoint, $100 per year for administrator, $100 per year for developer. And in practice, I, I um, set aside one to two hours for each maintenance test. And there's, okay. That's and about it. The, are there, is there a separate test for each level? Um, no. 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 Ah, got it. One okay. Dev, one, one dev, one admin. So well, I think we'll take these two last questions, and then we'll cut it off there. Actually, I have a list of questions. <laughs> Can you stand close to the microphone? Okay. And, and I would say, can you ask one, and we'll be around afterwards so we can answer more later. Okay. And you can also post to the chatter. And you can post to the chatter. Okay. Uh, the hard question then. Uh, would, would the person who is taking the assignment, would, uh, would they be timed based on how much time they spend in the org when you said like 20 hours to 40 hours? No. No. Totally okay. untimed. You have 30 days. You can take as long or as little amount of time you want in that 30-day window. And say, uh, today uh, I started on the assignment and came up with a um, solution for one of the tasks on the assignment because I don't know how the assignment is. So I'm just guessing. And the next day you have a better way of actually handling it. Do you get a negative marking for actually changing your code back no. and forth? We don't, we don't look at that in any kind of detail as far as... I mean, we, don't, we, don't, we aren't tracking you logging in and logging out of your org, changing yeah. things. We don't look at the, audit, the, the setup audit trail normally as judges. No. I never have. No. You know, so you have 30 days yeah. to make that org your baby. Yeah, and you do it all in the sandbox, right? So you're doing yeah. it, you do whatever you want. You delete stuff, add stuff, whatever. But then you're going to deploy it to a production org. Yep. That's, That's all we see is the production org. Yep. Now, I will say, once you deploy it to the production org, do yourself a favor. Do a click through, right? Do do the judges a favor. Do a click through, right? Okay. Like, yeah, it's working in sandbox. I just deployed it. The deployment worked. I'm done. Yeah, log in as each user. Do the click. Create some data. Right then. So when you provide the org, you provide both the sandbox and the 
You, you'll Ricardo. create a sandbox, yeah. Okay. So let's get the last question there, and then we'll wrap up here. So thank you very much. Uh, I've already passed the advanced developer multiple choice questions, so I'm waiting for the program assignment. So the next one, I mean, like, so if I don't have enough time now, I mean, can I take the next assignment? I mean, next schedule? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Is yeah, head, shaking yes. Shaking head, yes. So, yes. Okay. And how frequently uh, the schedules are available? There's Meaning four times, times a year, times roughly a year. Okay. equally okay. spread out. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the rainforest. Remember, certification has value because we all put effort into it. That includes you. That includes all of us who are doing it. We want every deserving candidate to be certified. That includes all of you. And do your best work. And good luck. <laughs>